Hello everyone, my name is Luke McGuinness. I'm a PhD student at the University of Bristol Medical School. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't attend this presentation live in the chat, it clashed with something else I had booked in. But today I'm going to talk about incorporating the results of risk of bias assessments into systematic reviews and evidence syntheses using a package I've been working on for the last couple of years called RobViz. And um, just to note that the new functionality and work I'm going to talk about today wouldn't have been possible without my amazing collaborators, Alex and Randall. So I just want to recognize their contributions um, at the very start. So risk of bias assessments are a key part of the systematic review process, and it'll be very familiar to anyone who's done a systematic review or evidence synthesis exercise before. Um, the RobViz package was designed to make these data more visually appealing. Traditionally, they're just presented as tables. Um, and so it's an OR package and web app to produce publication quality risk of bias figures. Um, so currently, it can produce two types of plots, traffic light plots and summary bar plots. Uh, and I'm just going to show you a brief example of these now. So this is an example of a traffic light plot using the risk of bias 2 tool for randomized controlled trials. You have your studies presented down the left hand side along with your domains of bias. So bias due to randomization and um, intended intervention or deviations, etc. Uh, along the top and then an overall risk of bias judgment on the right hand side. Acceptable levels of risk of bias here are high, some concerns and low, though that will vary from tool to tool. So if you're looking at observational studies, that's slightly different. Um, and another way to present this data is as a summary bar plot. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and in this case, it's not presenting study level data. It's summarizing the proportion of evidence that's at a specific risk of bias level in a specific domain. So it's just another way to show the same data. Um, so while this is better than a table, it's still not ideal. Um, and we've noticed as we've been re reviewing how RobVis has been used in the literature, that risk of bias assessments are regularly performed, but then very briefly discussed in the methods and any tables or figures are relegated to the supplementary material. Um, and this is insufficient or it's, it's, it's not great because it's not enough to simply perform the assessments, create a figure and discuss briefly. You really need to actively think about what this means for your meta-analysis. So are you putting studies at high risk of bias into your meta-analysis? Um, and does the effect differ between studies at different le different risk of bias? Um, so to answer these questions and make it easier for the reader to know what's going on, we think it's better to try and produce these paired uh, risk of bias and forest plots. So as shown on the right hand side here, you have your traditional forest plot and then an extra panel on the right hand side, which shows you pretty much the traffic light plot I demonstrated earlier. Um, and it's also useful if you're going to go about doing this to try and stratify your data set by risk of bias level to see if there's any difference in effect estimate between studies at different risk of bias. Um, so the problem with this approach is while it all sounds great in theory, there's no tool that currently exists to allow you to create these figures easily. So this figure was taken from the BMJ paper on the new risk of bias to tool for randomized controlled trials, but the figure was created by hand. So it's, it's not very reproducible, it's not very R. Um, so what I'm going to talk through today is how we use Metaphor and RobViz to create new functionality that allows users to make these paired forest plots um, very, very easily. So I'm going to talk you briefly through the two data sets we use in our example. Um, the first one is a, a Metaphor example data set. Um, it's a set of 13 studies looking at the effectiveness of BCG vaccine against tuberculosis. And then similarly on the other side, we have risk of bias data or risk of bias assessments for each of those 13 studies. So just to note that these are fake risk of bias assessments, they're purely for illustrative purposes. <coughs> um, and I'm saying nothing about the quality of the studies because I haven't looked at them myself. So following through a fairly standard approach to performing in meta-analysis, the first step is to use the raw count data from the BCG um, data set to create effect estimates and sampling variances for each uh, study. Um, and then pass that information to the metaphor or an A function to perform a meta-analysis and save the results from that as an object, in this case, res for results. So the next step normally is to visualize this using the metaphor forest function. Um, and you can, this is a very standard 
uh, forest plot. So now that you've seen what the standard approach is, I'm going to walk you through the, the two ways in which a very small adjustment to this can add um, a lot of information. So the first one is by appending a risk of bias forest plot using the data set I just showed you containing your risk of bias assessments to this standard forest plot produced by Metaphor. Um, and the function is very creatively named Rob append to forest because it is just a wrapper for the Metaphor forest function and that appends this traffic light plot to the right hand side. So you can already see that this is adding potentially useful information to the forest plot. So for example, for the Hearth and Sutherland um, study, the fourth one down, are we confident in that effect estimate given that it's at a high risk of bias overall and similarly for two other studies. <clears throat> So while this is an improvement, it's still not ideal because you're not grouping studies um, and you have no control really over the subgroups. So this is where the second function uh, comes in, which is a bit more sophisticated and probably has the best name of any function I've worked on in any package, Rob Blubbergram. Uh, and again, it is just taking your results object from your risk of bias or from your meta-analysis and your risk of bias data set as standard and plugging it into this function. So it's really not much, it's not very onerous on the user to produce these plots once you have the data ready to go. So what this function does is it takes whatever meta-analytical model you've applied, um, though for the moment it's limited to metaphor, uh, and applies it to each, applies it across your studies grouped by risk of bias level. So what we mean here is these studies have been stratified by their overall risk of bias level, um, and then you get a subgroup or a subtotal uh, effect per group. So this function leans quite heavily on the amazing Forrester package built by Randall Boys. Um, it's still in development, so there's still a bit of work to do. For example, it's very hard to tell what's a um, study versus a summary effect, because summary effects are usually denoted by diamonds, but we haven't worked out that out yet. Though who knows, potentially by the time you see this next week, um, I'll have worked out the last few details. Fingers crossed. But just to note, you have a lot more flexibility than just stratifying by the overall risk of bias. Um, so for example, if you were particularly interested in bias due to randomization, which is domain one in this tool, um, you can specify that that's, that's the column, that's the domain you want to stratify on. And um, so you see here, there's now a lot more studies at low risk of bias for that specific domain. So again, it, it's starting to get people thinking about um, actual study results and risk of bias results together rather than thinking of them as two independent entities, which is what often happens. So a couple of take home messages from our experience working on this and for users, the two key things is that risk of bias assessment should be presented alongside the corresponding result to make it easy for readers to know the quality of what's gone into the meta-analysis. And secondly, risk of bias level should be investigated as a source of heterogeneity between studies. Um, it's often not, and it's often potentially one of the biggest reasons why you might get different effect estimates across studies. Um, for developers, there's, we had a really good experience working with the maintainer of the Metaphor package to build on their functionality. Um, and it's only due to their foresight when creating the forest plot um, function in Metaphor that we were able to wrap it so easily for RobViz. Um, and on the flip side, if you're developing packages yourself, think about what information other users might need or other developers might need to build out more functionality around your, your uh, package and what information they need to do that. Um, and then finally, just to wrap up some further information about the tool in case anyone wants to go away and read some more. So we have a package website. We also have a Shiny app. And um, there's a very brief introductory paper on the tool which doesn't cover this new functionality because um, it's come out quite a while ago now in research census methods if you want to go in and have a look. And if you're interested in contributing to the package, we'd be really, really excited to have you. Um, all of the collaborators, so Alex and Randall, I both met on GitHub, I've never met them in person. Um, so don't be afraid to get in contact and get involved. So either open an issue on the GitHub repository, tweet at me or send me an email. Um, and then finally, once again, to thank my collaborators uh, without whom the experience would have been much diminished. And um, that's it for me. Thank you.